Hey, look what we have here. This is an unbranded uh, high pressure air compressor for, well, currently it could be used for air guns and whatnot, but I'm going to use it for scuba. So I've got a few scuba tanks, but out of the box, this is not ready to create breathing air. It's going to need some tweaking. Now this model does come with uh, a much larger than normal filter here. This is a disc, uh, I mean a, a top that opens, it's really tight right out there. And down inside there is filters. And uh, that's good, it's a water separator oil filter. And there's, a, there's another valve on this side that has a bit of those properties too. But still not enough. It's got to have uh, a proper filtration system, which I'm in the process of putting together. And we're going to make this work. Um, I've done a lot of research. I've looked at other people's experiences with these types of compressors, but this one is totally unbranded. But it is exactly the same as the other ones I've checked. All the parts are the same. Um, the advantage of this particular one it did come with this extra large uh, filtration already built in. So that's a good first uh, stage of filtration. So this kit came with the compressor, power plug, a large uh, filter. This, this one is a carbon model. It's all, uh, this, the fill in here is only carbon for odors. Well, it actually has a little bit of oil filters, uh, cotton filters also. So that's okay, but we're gonna make it much better. It also comes with a high pressure hose with a quick connect female on the other side, threaded male on this side. It comes with a small water pump that is gonna provide the cooling water to the pump ports up here, in and out. It includes two water hoses, but these are kind of pathetic. Very soft hose, kinks a lot, kinks very easy. I will not be using these, um, but I mean, I tried it. It does pump water, but it restricts it a little bit. So I went and purchased some much higher quality tubing. This is actually fuel line, but it most closely matched the, the tubing that tubing's from China. So I had a hard time trying to find an exact match, but this was, this worked really well. And uh, it's very flexible, does not kink. And uh, this is, like I said, this is actually fuel line. It comes with some extra disc filters. There's O-rings in the package. There's also the copper uh, rupture discs replacements. There's five or six of them in there. And it comes with some other spare parts. Uh, O-rings, seals for the uh, 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 pressure relief valves. There's a, another disc, another uh, check valve. A lot of little parts in there and more rupture discs. The instruction manual that comes with it is at best laughable. This is it's a pathetic instruction manual, but <laughs> there is some useful information in there. Um, it talks about, it doesn't even show this compressor. It shows a different one, but they all kind of work the same. So it, there's useful information, some basic uh, get you started type things, um, but it is lacking, very lacking. That's okay. We can figure this out. One of the most important parts of these types of compressors, these are pumping up to very high pressure. I will not be going over 3000 PSI, but there's a lot of uh, paintballers and, and uh, airsoft guys who like to put their carbon fiber tanks up over 4000. That's not going to happen with me. I'm sticking with 3000. That's high enough, I'm, but I'm going to be using this for scuba diving anyway. This. Uh, is going to have to have the air cleaned up quite a bit because you're going to be breathing this. We don't want 
Uh, the compressor oils, it does have an uh, oil lubrication. Uh, you don't need that getting into your scuba tank and sucking it in your lungs. So it won't be getting in there. Also, moisture, the process of compression happens so rapidly that moisture in the air will condense and form inside the scuba tank. So you have to catch it before it gets in there. So to start this machine, it's going to create incredible heat. Um, the heat of compression, rapid compression, very high. Air conditioning, same thing. Even an air compressor in your garage gets pretty hot. Um, but this is pumping up to very high pressures, very high temperatures. So they provide a little water pump, very small, but it'll do the job. Um, we're going to take some water tubing, water tubing in and out. Very simple. This particular one has quick connects. It's just spring load, push it in, done. The other end is going to go into the pump. And then I have not cut this tube yet, but it'll, I'll be cut it exactly in half. Stick that tube in there and that will go back to the bucket. This is going to be in probably a five gallon bucket of water and let it recirculate. It's just the pump is just going to keep it circulating between uh, the, the bucket and the compressor. Uh, this is the second stage of the compressor. Um, I've, a lot of, there's a lot of pioneers who have been doing these types of, uh, of uh, uh, compressors, these little cheap Chinese compressors. They've already went through a lot of the pains. Uh, there's tons of videos you can look on YouTube and, and learn a lot about it. But this one is kind of unique. It's unbranded. There's no videos on this one yet that, uh, as of the time of this filming. And this particular one comes with an extra large filter already. And we'll see how that helps. But on the side, this is the final stage here. They provide a hose, and I'll probably use this hose, but I already have purchased some better ones. These are, these are pretty good though. These are designed up to 4,500 PSI. So this will connect to another filter. I'm gonna have even more filtration. It's a quick connect. And hopefully you can see all this. Let's see, we get this camera raised up. This, uh, this is a pretty good filter. It's well made. It's very thick. Um, it's built for high pressure, but it only has carbon, and we're going to do better than that. We got we got to have water separator. I've ordered a water separator filter. It hasn't arrived yet, but we'll go ahead and get that all mounted up on a rack. This will be mounted vertically, and uh, it's very important to uh, be serious about it when it comes to air you're going to breathe. You can see the difference. Uh, this heavy-duty stainless steel uh, braided hose compared to the plastic with a, with a coil spiral around it that comes with the compressor. They'll both hold pressure, but uh, this one's clearly superior. Very strong feeling. On the side of the compressor, there is the plugs for power coming in and the power going to the water pump. So what happens is you have your main power plug here, providing power to the compressor, and then it has an outlet, built-in outlet, that's gonna go to your water pump, which will sit off the table. I'll have this up on a short table and then the water pump in a bucket down below. The front of the compressor has the oil window and this is shipped with no oil in it, so you have to put that in. You try to run this without the oil, you will destroy it pretty quick. Um, it's illegal for these types of machines or anything for that matter to be shipped with fluids like that in it. So you have to purchase your own and install it. So I did a lot of research into the best oils recommended and we'll talk about that here. The pump comes with a regular oil plug here. Um, the instructions tell you to remove it and then they have this venting oil plug that will replace it. This is an oil that I found that is recommended for breathing air compressors. This is designed for high pressure breathing air. 
And the beauty of this particular oil is it is completely non-toxic. So even if some of it gets past your filters and makes it into your tanks, it won't hurt you. So Mid-State Air Compressor Incorporated. I found this available online several places. This is the information on the back of the jug. And you can see under the health advisory, it has a zero, meaning it's non-toxic. And then under fire, it only has a one. It's not terrible, uh, terribly flammable. So this is a very safe oil to use for your high pressure compressor. So apparently diester based oils are the best choice for a breathing air compressor. We will find out because there's a lot of schools of thought on that. There's um, synthetic oils that they say are better for the compressor itself, but I'm more interested in my life. So this is going to be my choice if this compressor seizes up and burns up, so be it. But I am going to use this oil because it was recommended and uh, we shall see. I'll be the guinea pig. So now for the bad news, um, a gallon of this type of oil, far from cheap. Now I paid $96 for this gallon of uh, special high pressure compressor oil, but I figured my life is worth more to me than, you know, saving a few bucks. So we're going <laughs> to, and, and obviously this compressor is not going to hold anywhere near a gallon. This should be many oil changes and uh, we'll give it a whirl. Okay, I've determined that the bottom brackets of the uh, frame I'm making, 18 inches should be enough. The pump is uh, actually about 14 inches, so, so I'm gonna cut two pieces at 18, and I'm gonna cut a couple of pieces of cross members at 12. All right, so next piece. 18 inches. You can cut these with a hacksaw, which is very inexpensive, but this band saw is so much faster. So you get the idea. Um, here's the, the uh, bottom frame. I'm gonna put some uprights on here and support the tanks, the uh, filters. A filter should nestle in one of these quite well. Bolt onto the side, zip one zip tie, and we're in business. So I've put this frame together and I cut a piece of plywood to go around all the bolts. And these rubber feet are off a uh, refrigeration compressor, this leftover parts here. This is optional, but I just want to keep everything up on rubber for isolation's sake and keep the noise down. Now if I decide to take the compressor on a boat, Oh, so I was standing in fire ants. I didn't realize it. So the good news is I just bought fire ant killer and I'll be spreading that around real soon. I hate those things, boy, they're brutal. Well, fun things of living in Florida. Oh man, my ankles are on fire right now. They, they got me a lot but I'm gonna get them a lot here shortly. They started it, you know. This is the frame so far. Um, it's, <laughs> this looks a lot like the erector sets we had when we were kids. It's kind of fun. I should make it all different colors. So here's the progress so far. The um, frame is pretty much put together and uh, yeah. Like I said, I'm just figuring this out as I go. I didn't exactly sit down and draw out plans or anything, so. <laughs> just 
Coming out kind of cool. Found this handle. I'm gonna bolt that on there. Well, this mad project is almost finished. I built the uh, metal frame, all with metal from Home Depot. Uh, nuts, bolts, paint, everything Home Depot. But the filters, of course, did a lot of online shopping. Got the pre-filter here. Um, that's the first stage filter. That's only 150 PSI off the, the top of the piston the main piston. So that filter casing was thin, uh, relatively thin, and I, compared to the other filters, and I was worried about it, but then I realized it's only 150 PSI, it's no big deal. There's a, a, a cotton filter in there. That's gonna catch oil and first bit of water. Then it comes out, uh, oh, here, up top. It comes out of that this filter on top to the second stage piston cylinder, which pumps it up to the very high pressure. This comes down to the distribution block. And out of the distribution block, hose, here's the bleeder. Comes over here to the oil water separator that I chose. That was a little pricey. I paid $132 for it. Ouch. Uh, it comes with this bracket on the bottom, so I just had to mount it. Then out of there, we're going to this other filter here. This filter. And it has molecular sieve in the bottom. Pretty good section of carbon filter up here. And then it comes out through this hose. There's a little loop de loop here because the hose is a little long. It goes to the most important filter of them all. It's not so much the filter, but the fact that it has a pressure regulator on top. This is the most important part. Without that pressure regulator, to hold back pressure, the water separator filters are not going to do a good job. And if you do your research, you'll find that that's the truth. This is not cheap. This was a $300 filter. It, ha it does have a cotton filter in it, but its main job is the pressure regulator on top. And um, it has a, a, a water vent on the bottom there, which I put some heavy duty tubing to. So if you do your research, you'll find that if you don't have the um, pressure maintaining valve, that this particular filter has the pressure maintaining valve or PMV built into the top. Uh, you don't build up enough pressure before it releases the air and your moisture is going into your tanks. A lot of it, that shouldn't be. So um, the idea is this will not allow any air to come out until it reaches 2000 PSI. And after that, it'll start feeding to the um, tank. Um, pretty important, once I, did, once I read all about it, I'm no expert on this by any means, but um, I've got myself educated. So, this is an interesting little setup I got here. Um, it was a lot of work. I put a lot of time into it because I wanted it to be somewhat portable and I didn't want it to be, uh, the filters to be strapped to blocks of wood. Um, all these parts, like that U-clamp that holds the filter on there, that U-clamp actually has clear rubber tubing on it so it won't damage the tube, the, the filter tube. Um, there's a piece of foam right here to protect the tube. 
I got this bleeder valve, very heavy duty. It's rated at 6,000. That's crazy. And I had to get some other fittings to make everything fit. It, this valve does not come with the eighth inch fittings required. So I had to get this adapter fitting from quarter to eighth, quarter female to eighth uh, male. And over here from quarter to um, eighth female. And then the um, fitting, foster fitting goes in there. Actually, this is the foster fitting. The... So this is ready to go. This is a scuba tank, which I have an 80 cubic foot scuba tank. And <laughs> we're going to find out if I can fill an 80 cubic foot scuba tank with this. Realistically, it's not a good idea, but I'm going to do it anyway. It's probably going to take several attempts because this machine is not going to stay cool enough to fill an 80. It, it's going to be a long run, so it's going to have to be done in stages. It's impractical, I know that, but I don't care. I'm just going to do it anyway for the fun. Everything about this is impractical. Just go to the scuba shop and have them fill your stuff. It's way less hassle, but but what fun is that? Where's the adventure, you know? So, so I have a... Uh, an adapter on here with a bleed valve. I got a nice one there found online for a decent price. And that bleed valve will allow me to bleed off the pressure that this uh, pressure regulator or PMV valve is holding back through its check valve. It would not be able to take the quick connect off uh, without being able to bleed off the pressure. So it's just simply a matter of adding a bleeder in line. The PMV valve slash water separator filter valve has its own bleeder on top. And it has no rupture disc. Or maybe it does. There's a hole in the very top of the valve. Up here, there's a very hole in the top. This is an adjustable valve, I believe. But I'll figure that out. It came with no instructions, of course, like most of this stuff comes from China, no instructions. Same thing with the water oil separator. It does not come with a pressure uh, burst disc. I think that's what I meant to say earlier. It has a pressure relief manual valve on the bottom, but no burst disc. So we're relying on the burst discs in the um, tank that I'm gonna fill. This is a one liter scuba tank. I'm relying on the burst disc on the top of the compressor. And you're not going to focus. There it goes. This thing's all kind of crooked here. And there's a burst disc on the blue filter in the back, the, um, which has molecular sieve and carbon. So we're ready to do the first run without the um, cooler on the water separator for this run. The humidity in the house right now, I don't know if you can see that or not, is 53%. So it's relatively low humidity in here. And the dry bulb's roughly 74 degrees. I've also took the precaution bringing a fire extinguisher in. You never know. <laughs> Now I did see one of, one of the uh, YouTubers who was doing his, he, he set it up in the garage and he hid behind a refrigerator, which I thought was funny, but it's funny when you're suddenly faced with it, you, you take a few precautions. Okay, I've got a little bit of an upgrade on the water cooling. Uh, went to a larger pump. The little pump that comes with this kit is barely adequate, so it flows fine if you're just cooling the head here. But if you're going to add on a, I'm calling it a subcooler, it's really not the correct name for this, but I want to chill down my uh, first filter or uh, water separator so that it removes even more moisture. So these tubes will uh, have cold water going through it and to cause the uh, air to condense the moisture out much quicker and be able to drain it out as we go. 
But anyway, I had to add this little T system here in 3 8 and then it reduces down to quarter inch right here. I'm just using quarter inch smaller tubing over here on the uh, water separator filter. Anyway, pump's running right now. And let's see how our flow is. There's no ice in here, really. The quarter inch tubing puts out enough, just enough. It's fine. And then the uh, 3 8 tubing, putting out plenty. Great flow. So the one uh, pump here can handle both uh, tubing lines. Well, we hit our first snag. The uh, assembly here that I made with the uh, bleed valve and quick connect started to leak at 2500 psi when the when the bottle here reached 2500 which you can see there it's sitting right on there at 2500 i wanted to go to 3000 but i could hear this leaking a little bit i could feel it around this fitting right here so i'm gonna have to redo that one i don't know why that's leaking that's weird but oops there we go I don't know why it's leaking, but I'll figure it out. I've, I expected leaks. I really did. I expected to have multiple leaks because, you know, it's so many joints, but not one leak in the compressor assembly. The compressor ran so nice and cool the whole time. It was amazing. The, um, the temperature didn't hardly go up at all. It did make some water. I had to bleed off all that. I got all the water out. Let's hope it, none of it made it into the... Uh, to the scuba tank. I doubt it. I don't think so, but we'll be testing all of that. Okay, we're gonna have a test run here again to, uh, tr we're trying to pump all the way to 3000. Didn't make it last time because we had a little air leak on this doohickey here. So, which reminds me I need to tighten that down. We'll get everything started and close all the vents and see how we do. Okay, we're right there at 3,000 PSI. Filled it up quick, real quick. About five minutes. It was at 1,000, went up to 3,000 in about five minutes. I can't complain. And the cooling system worked flawlessly. I don't know if this camera's planning on focusing. There we go. It worked flawlessly. Everything was perfect. This actually stayed pretty cool. 3,000 PSI is nothing for this compressor. And uh, scuba, that's all it requires is 3,000. The filtration system is a little bit more than normal for sure because you're gonna be breathing it. Pressure maintaining valve on the top there. Did a great job. It doesn't even open until you hit 2,000 PSI. No air flows until it hits 2,000. That maintains the pressure and you get the best water removal. So I couldn't be more happy. Uh, it was a lot of work to put this together, um, but it was kind of fun at the same time.